Welcome to In Her Voice. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am passionate about helping women live authentically by listening to their inner voice. Get ready to be inspired by women of all walks of life that have set aside their should be's and not good enoughs and are standing in their true voice, the voice of wisdom that each and every one of us has inside. Hi, you guys, this is Kelly, and you are listening to In Her Voice. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have an amazing guest for you, and we are going to be talking about how to be radiant. And you know, when I was in my 20s, I remember a guy that I was dating at the time um, said to me one night, you look radiant. And I thought to myself, first of all, that made me feel really good. But yes, like I felt alive. I felt like I was glowing. I felt like I was joyful. And these are the kind of things that I think transcend what we know to be quote unquote beautiful. And I love this conversation with Emily Pereira because that is what we're really digging into, what it means to be radiant. And you know, before we get into that, I want to remind you that my upcoming fall mastermind is about to begin in October. And one of the things that I so love is the women that come into this group and start taking action on their dreams, change, like their actual physical being changes. I can see it. I can see literally their radiance, their soul shining from within. Because it's like when you begin to feed your soul, what it's asking for in the, you know, in terms of action, in terms of practice, in terms of emotional fuel. Oh my gosh, you guys, we light up. We light up. And it is a beautiful thing to witness and it's a beautiful thing to experience. And so if you are a woman who is ready to be radiant, if you are ready to take that inspired action on your dreams and you have an idea, my mastermind was created just for you. And I am accepting applications right now. I would love to chat with you to see if it would be a good fit. So if this is something you're interested in, check out the link at kellycover.com slash mastermind and fill out your application there. You can learn more about the details and then we can connect and see if it's going to be a good fit for you. And I have a feeling that it will be. Anyway, let's get right to our interview with Emily. First, though, I want to tell you a little bit about her. Emily Pereira is an international retreat leader, certified yoga teacher, and life coach specializing in helping women attract soul-affirming love into their lives. She lives in Costa Rica, where she is building the Spirit Nature Retreat and Wellness Center. She's also the author of the forthcoming book, The Quest. And you are going to love, love, love our conversation. It goes deep and there's lots of juiciness here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy How to Be Radiant with Emily Pereira. Emily Pereira, I am so excited to welcome you to In Her Voice today. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Kelly. I'm a, I'm a longtime fan. Fantastic. This is so exciting for both of us then. So I wanted to dive right in to our topic of the day, and that is what it means to be a radiant woman. I love this word radiant. I love the word radiance. I'd love to just start with what that word means for you. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, I mean, you know, contrary to what the billion, multi-billion dollar beauty industry would like us to believe, you know, radiance can't be bought. It can't be applied, plumped, implanted, or injected, you know, and I have no problem with any of those things if they make you feel good. It's just that those things aren't actually going to get as any closer to our radiance, And, you know, radiance isn't about age. It isn't about body shape or physical features. 
it's really an energy that shines from your soul and magnetizes every single person, event, and opportunity and experience into your life. Mm, it magnetizes every person, experience, opportunity that steps into your life. I love that. Yeah. So it's almost like Absolutely. this. Absolutely, um, because it's, you know, energy, because energetically like attracts like. So it becomes a force within you. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely an energetic force that lives within you. And this is why, you know, we can see a woman who might be, you know, in the second half of her life and maybe not even considered traditionally beautiful by our, you know, American standards. Um, and she's just glowing with radiance. And then we mm -hmm. might see, you know, a younger woman, maybe 20 years old, that's on the cover of a magazine and she just sort of has a dullness to her. And that difference that we see is radiance. Mm. And I think we all know exactly what you mean by that. Like we've all seen the woman in the room that it's like you can't quite put your finger on it. But what is it about her that just is so amazing and I think the cool thing about that is that if you can see that radiance in someone else, it also means that it's, in, it's inside of you. Well, and it's absolutely this, inside every single one of us. It's just that we agree to so many things that aren't us that actually cover over it. But yeah. once we can sort of adopt a more supportive belief system that allows us to really nurture our radiance, that's when we all have the opportunity to glow. Mm, adopt a supportive belief system. Let's talk about that. So what, what do you mean by adopt a supportive belief system? Sure. So... You know, so information feeds your beliefs and your beliefs feed your thoughts and your thoughts are either going to feed or deplete your radiance. So having a supportive belief system that helps you navigate your life really is the difference between constantly feeling like you're not enough or having a life that feels like a magical adventure where it's rigged in your favor. Hmm. Well, t why don't you tell us, I'm guessing, since you teach this, that you have deep experience in the understanding of this change of belief system. I mean, what happened in your life that really was the catalyst for this huge switch for you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, in my 20s, which, you know, I was sort of led to believe would be like the prime of my life and... Um, when everything's, you know, firm and, <laughs> you know, now I'm 40 years old, um, you know, and, and you kind of had the world at your fingertips, my radiance was nowhere to be found. <laughs> and I, you know, was pushing very hard to do all of the things that I was told would bring me happiness and the things that I thought would bring me happiness. And by the time I got to my late 20s, I had this life that looked really good on paper. You know, I say that because that was before Instagram was a thing. So it looked good on paper back then. <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, it was like number one in my company, Fortune 100 company, senior sales rep, um, year after year, lived in a home on the the beach with my man, who was one of the original MySpace founders. I had, you know, a closet full of designer clothes that I'd wear to parties, events, and vacations. And, you know, even when I say it out loud, it still sounds really good. But at the time, it just never felt like it was enough. And so I did more of what I knew. You know, I, I worked more, I shopped more, I worked out more, I traveled more. And you know, for some reason, we were escaping our so-called perfect life by partying most weekends and, you know, escaping this perfect life. Um, not really the sign of really happy people. So right around the time I thought that the man and I would be getting engaged, we've been together for about six years, I found out that he cheated on me and, mm. you know, went into a pretty dark place, moved out of the beachfront home, our collective, you know, group of friends sort of quietly went with him 
and I was struggling with health issues and, you know, really in a depression, really like rock bottom of my life. And, um, you know, I was full of resentment for him, but it paled in comparison to the resentment I had for myself. You know, I was 29 years old and just sure that I'd made horrible mistakes and ruined my life. And fortunately, the forces of the universe converged and connected me with a powerful spiritual teacher. Um, you know, and I knew like nothing about spirituality. This is back in 2006. I mean, this man may as well have been Santa Claus for all I knew <laughs> about spirituality. And I would soon discover that he had information that's not in books and hands that can literally heal your body, which was news to me because I was working in the pharmaceutical industry. Mm. Um, and he just, he looked at me um, on that first day and he was like, I see you're in pain, but your pain has a lot less to do with this man and this life you've lost and a lot more to do with the fact you've bought into illusions about yourself and the way that the world works that simply aren't true. And the biggest illusion that you're working with is you think you have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You think you have to be perfect in order to be worthy of approval, acceptance, and ultimately love. And I was like, nailed it. Okay, I think we're done here. <laughs> but, but truly, I was like, yeah, that's it. And he was like, you know, don't feel bad. Every single woman from me, he's like, I don't care if you're Oprah, Angelina Jolie, the Queen Elizabeth, or the lady plowing the rice fields in Bali. He's like, every single woman receives this perfection programming from the day that she's born. And what ends up happening is we have women who've created these lives that look really good and they don't feel as good as they look and we can't figure out why. And he's like, what are you doing that's creative? And I was like, oh, I'm not creative. I think that gene skipped me. And he just laughed and leaned back in his chair. I remember this so clearly. And he's this incredible artist that showcased his art all around the world. I met him at an art gallery. And he said to me, well, creativity is not a genetic thing. It's an energy that's a natural part of being human. And you are freezing yourself out of your natural creative flow with your attempt to be perfect. And he asked me, he was like, you know, well, he was like, you know, nothing in the natural world is perfect. A flower isn't perfectly straight. A, a tree isn't perfectly symmetrical. Like you're part of the natural world, right? So how or why could you be perfect? Well, the answer is you can't. But this attempt to be perfect means you're walking around in a constant state of judgment of yourself. And that judgment carries a very dense energy vibration that is forming a block in between your spiritual and physical universe that's making it impossible for this energetic flow to course through your body and get to your creative channels, which are your hands. And then he gave me the biggest wisdom bomb I've ever gotten in my life. It changed everything. He said, you don't have to be perfect to participate. You just have to give yourself permission to be the beginner. The beginner isn't supposed to know anything, so the beginner can never fail. Mm. And I was like, when you say it like that, it's pretty damn obvious. But I, I completely missed me for, you know, 29 years of my life. And it wasn't oh like I gosh. felt instantly creative, but in time it, it started to change everything because it just gave me a whole new lease on life and a liberation that I just really didn't even know existed. Totally. Oh, what a great story. And this perfection programming um, is such a block to creativity because, and I've experienced this myself, before I really truly accepted myself as a creative being, I, you know, I thought, well, I don't want to draw because it it's, doesn't look that good. <laughs> and really? I don't want to write because I'm not a professional or it's not going to get published. It was always this, like, it's not good enough. And so I won't do it at all. And I'm oh, exactly. positive that I'm not the only one who's ever experienced that. No, I feel like it's almost in the white space for us as women that like, if we're not going to show up and just slay it, we're not supposed to do it at all. Isn't that so interesting how we, we just expect to be able to show up and be a master at exactly. things? Exactly. <laughs> and so we end up living these lives in, I, I joke around, I was like, I was in a straight jacket inside of a prison cell, <laughs> living my life, no, no, not living life is what I was doing and totally depleting my radiance. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and another thing that I want to go back to is you said that you didn't, you had all of these things, but it didn't feel like enough. And what I think is a really interesting phenomenon among women is that we fill up our not enoughness with more things that don't make us feel like enough. Exactly. Because we don't have the information. And so this is what, like, I really believe that when one woman sort of finds herself out of this maze, it becomes her dharma to help other women as well. And am I unique and special? I mean, not particularly. And at the same time, we all are unique and special, but I just have, I just have the information. And so I just, I, it it means so much to me that I actually have, it's the most valuable thing I have truthfully Mm -hmm. is my information. And so, um, I love passing this on to other women and seeing what they do then in their lives. And just to continue the story, as I mentioned, I didn't instantly feel creative, but um, everything he said to me on that day resonated as a deep truth. And so I continued to work with him. And one thing that he taught me, and and this is just the biggest, fastest game changer for your radiance, is to start taking radical personal responsibility. And so that means, mm -hmm, that means taking radical personal responsibility for every single thing in your life, the good, the bad, the downright crazy (laughs) is really the fast track to all things good. Mm. So, yeah. And let's, can we talk, can we dig into that a little bit more? Because I, I love this idea. I love this idea. Absolutely. So, you know, it's really in any situation, especially, you know, the really challenging, crusty ones Mm -hmm. is saying, you know, why did I create this? And then find the gift. And the gift is usually a shift in perspective, a recognition, a moment of clarity that leads to greater compassion for yourself. And then that translates to greater compassion for others. So what this does, it allows us to vibrate in gratitude instead of caring and oh, poor me, bad things happen to me, victim nature vibration. Because like attracts like, right? So mm-hmm. if I'm constantly in that place of, oh, poor me, my ex-boyfriend cheated on me and I had to move out and these things, then I'm just going to kind of cre- continue to create those same situations again and again on a Groundhog Day type type scenario um, until we can neutralize the energy around that situation. Once we are, once we neutralize the situation, we then can move on. And so not only is personal responsibility extremely sexy, it's, um, it's really vitamins for the radiance. And this is, I started to do that after I first started working with this teacher and my life started to change very quickly. Um, I, you know, was able to let go, make new friends. I met a new beautiful man, moved into a new beautiful home, got a dog, and I had all this stuff of life again. I was able to create that again easily, but I knew something deep inside was still missing. And it was very unnerving. It was very unnerving to be able to create all these things that society says will bring you happiness. And now I was doing it with more conscious information and I wasn't like, you know, swinging from the chandelier party girl anymore. (laughs) And I still was like, oh no, there's something profound missing from my life. And my teacher said to me, you know, and he's this like very powerful clairvoyant and he, he looks at me and he says, I see you're a writer. He was like, you have to write your story. Even if you show it to nobody ever, it's going to heal your heart. And when he said that, I remember we were on the phone. I felt like someone was doing a tap dance on my heart. And Mm. it just burst out of me. I was like, you know what? I think I am a writer. Now, let's not worry about the little detail that I had written. Nothing aside from emails and maybe like the occasional thank you letter (laughs) in 11 years. But there was like, I just felt it. Now I know it was spirit talking, like my inner voice was, Mm -hmm. was talking through me. And I was like, okay, but I don't even know how to start thinking he's going to say like, oh, go take a course at UCLA extension or, you know, you can do an online program. And he, he said, you know, for the next 30 days, set an intention before you go to bed that you're recovering your innate creativity and then you just be the beginner. 
And I was like, oh, just be the beginner. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) Um, But I had nothing to lose. And I felt like this apathy was like eating me from the inside out. I felt like I was a living person with a deadness inside of me. And so I did it because I had nothing to lose. And I sat down one day with my shiny MacBook Air and I set a little intention that I was going to tell the truth, start at the beginning, be the beginner and have fun. And I started to write and I was amazed that by simply suspending judgment, like not like deleting the first line, oh, that wasn't good enough. Oh, you know, just the words flowed freely. And I had first a couple paragraphs and then a couple pages and then I had like a chapter and I was like, I remember that first week literally breaking down in tears and thinking, I'm going to be okay. Mm. And one thing led to the next, and it was just this explosion of creativity went off inside me. And I began to play guitar and sing and write songs, paint paintings, dance in a burlesque troupe, do improv, and all from being the beginner. And I had never done any of these things. And I just... was blown away that all of this, number one, was living inside me, that I was totally closed off to for the better part of my life. But also, it was pretty incredible to, you know, aside from the amazingness of, wow, there's all this inspiration that I'm getting to, you know, relish in, but all these other things started to happen as a result that I didn't know were connected. It was like a cascade of spiritual changes happened in my life um, as a result of accessing the creative. Mm. And it was, you know, less did I care about what other people had and what other people were doing and thinking I needed to do more and more were my thoughts like, oh, that would be a cool way to connect those chapters or, or that would be a really good melody for that song. And I really felt a dramatic shift. Like as my belief in myself went up, my competition with women went down. And this was one of the most dramatic and amazing feelings I've ever experienced. And suddenly I just had this camaraderie with other women that I'd never felt before, especially women that were living their dreams and taking chances and exploring their creativity and a very real compassion for women that were still stuck in their prisons of perfection because let's face it, I knew those prison walls very well. And so I knew that that was going to be my life's work about helping other women find their way out of this just like not enoughness and And I really, probably the most surprising thing you touched on it before is just that it never felt enough in my other life where I had all this stuff. And what I understood is it will never be enough until we feel like we're enough. Oh oh my gosh. Yes, that is it. It will never feel like enough unless we know that we are enough. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This, this is so powerful because, um, I, what I love is the connection of approaching things with a beginner's mind, allowing the creativity flow, even if it's not perfect. And through that, you nurture your radiance and then you attract other radiant women to you. And this is not just you that can do this. This is a formula that every person listening to this podcast can use, right? Oh my gosh, you don't even understand what a hot mess I was. I was like, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I mean, I was so blocked creatively that I didn't even think I was creative. And no, it's just, it's, you know, and this is what I say about the information, you know, it's, it's not that I am particularly special. I just have the information and I've been now, it's been 12 years that I've been working still with my same teacher. And, um, now I teach what he teaches and, um, you know, through my private coaching and my retreats and on my retreats, um, I have one coming up here, um, the last week of October is that we do writing, Um, workshops every single day. And I'm actually trained in a specific writing methodology that is 
designed to draw out your creativity in the most fun and gentle way. And I'm always astounded on day from day one to day six, the transformation that happens in every single person that comes. And people who come don't mm. particularly identify as writers, but by the end, they most certainly do. And I have people that have gone on to write like real manuscripts um, that are being published. That's so amazing. it's really, really exciting. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, there, what I have found is that the passion to create is the true lifeblood of the human experience. I mean, I, I love nice things. I like, I like flying in first class and I love, you know, being able to buy organic food and all of these things. And, and I think that being able to create businesses and, and lives that support that are amazing, but we are creators every single one of us it is we to be human means to be creative and so until we really connect with this part of ourselves there is going to be something inside of us that is just going there's more there's mm-hmm. more I don't know what it yeah. is but there's more it's yeah. it's that there's something unique inside each of us that wants to be expressed 100 percent. and you know what i think is interesting about creativity as a practice so that's what i hear you saying like for you you begin to practice different ways of being creative even though it felt uncomfortable even though it wasn't perfect you did you wrote and you danced and you moved in different ways and you exposed yourself to different things and you know, what's super interesting to me about that is that when we start to access that practice of creativity, then we start to see, okay, the things that we're creating aren't just limited to like a painting or, uh, you know, words in a journal. We're creating our life every day. We're creating how we're moving through this world. And that kind of taps back into that radical personal responsibility. And my question for you is like, what do you say? How do you explain this to women who are like, bullshit? I didn't want that to happen to me. I didn't create that. I don't buy into that. How do you teach women this concept? (laughs) <laughs> that's funny I've, I've recently had a client that we, we worked through that for many months um well one thing is if you're not creating it who is is would be the first question that I would ask and that really helps us start to get into that place of well, like who is creating this because if we want to say you know a lot of people say well the universe or god or something like that and you know Everybody has their own definition of those types of things. And at the same time, it's like, well, the minute that we have that philosophy or that belief system that something else is creating it, we've just given away our power. So does it feel good to give away our power to something else and just wait for someone to come with their magic wand to give you permission or to say that you're good enough or to say that your life is going to start now? Or do you want to have more of a say in how you're creating your life? It's really, it's, it's your decision. And we see women all the time creating amazing lives that they love. Like, is that, did they just get lucky or are they out there taking a role in that, in that action? It's really, it's, do you want to sit on the sidelines and wait or do you want to be an active creator in your life? Yeah, well, and I think that's the key. I love that. Do you want to wait for things to happen to you or do you want to go out there and you want to make things happen for you, create things to happen for you? And it's nothing short of tragic, truly, when women feel that they have no power. Absolutely. And, and really, I, I, do, I, do, I can see very clearly now, I was waiting for somebody to come and give me permission. I was waiting for someone to tell me I was good enough or talented enough and, or save me. And, and nobody was coming. And nobody is coming. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you can save yourself. And it's actually far sweeter than anybody else saving you because you're not beholden to anybody outside of yourself and and really being sovereign is is a feeling like no other 
And, and what I've really found too is, you know, in moments of inspiration, that is when we feel connected to who we are and why we're here. This is when regrets of the past, we start to see, oh, I had to take all of those difficult steps to get here to this inspired moment where there's no place I'd rather be. And so it turns those regrets into gratitude, which is a tremendous healing and feels like a 50 ton, pound ton weight is lift off your shoulders. And it also prevents future tripping because you're not constantly hoping or wishing or worrying about the future because you're so connected to the present moment. And so what we know is that the present moment vibration creates your future time reality. So if you're happy and content and inspired and with gratitude in the present, those things will be in your future. So how do we get, you know, we hear this, we hear this about the present moment, that it's the place to be, it's the only place where joy exists, but it's really hard to get into the present moment, you know, we're mostly jumping from the past mistakes we've made to the future worries, but the creative and inspiration will allow you to get into that present moment more of the time. Mm, yeah, the present the present moment is where it's at. That's how we want to feel. Like if you can tap into all those moments where you feel exactly the way you want to feel, chances are you're not thinking about what's coming up. You're not thinking about the past. You're not judging yourself. You you don't have you know beating yourself up kind of thoughts. You're just being one hundred percent in the moment. Exactly. Oh, so good. Emily, so, so good. So um, taking us back full circle to this idea of radiance. This may seem like a silly question, but I'm going to ask it because I usually feel like when I, when I have these questions on my heart, someone is wondering. And I, you know, my voice is the voice of all the women listening to this podcast. And my question is, how do you know that you are radiant? You know that you're radiant when you, when like love is pouring out of you. It is when you feel like you want to just say hi and be super friendly with the person behind the checkout counter at the market. And you feel compelled to tell the person making your coffee that they have beautiful eyes and that you, you know, just want to flirt for no reason, not because it's for the other person, but because it feels good to you. You feel radiant when you are in gratitude for your life when you when you see things as half full and you you trust you trust that things are working out even when even when there's hard moments yeah oh yes you know what it makes me think of is i can look at my life you know on a timeline and i feel that the more i step into this place of fully accepting who I am, fully accepting my power to create the life that I want and, you know, that I am a creative being, f you know, nurturing this radiance, like you say, I feel that there, that there has been a softening to me. Absolutely. There's such a softening. It's, it's when we're really, it's our feminine energy. Radiance is feminine. Yes. And so, you know, a lot of, you know, when I do my private coaching with, with the women that I work with, I, I give them, you know, I say, tell me, do these things resonate with you? Do these, do these, do any of these words you feel connected with? And it's, do you feel serious? Do you feel like you have problem mentality? Like, oh, well, you know, we could go to the Hollywood Bowl tomorrow. But the problem is, is there's so much traffic at five o'clock. Um, do you feel like you put a lot of effort into things? Are you exhausted? Do you feel like you punish yourself? Do you feel like you are in competition? Now, mm. most of the time, everybody says yes, that they connect with mm -hmm. all of those things. And those are all actually masculine qualities. Those are all masculine qualities that harden us as women. And the reason that we adopt these things that are masculine is because the patriarchy still runs this place. <laughs> Amen, sister. And, 
<laughs> They're still running this place. And even though we as women actually energetically should be vibrating five times higher than men because we can create human life effortlessly in our bodies, um, we drop our vibration to get that approval and acceptance unconsciously from the people in charge. And so the feminine actually, instead of seriousness, she vibrates in amusement. This is when she's just, instead of getting really serious about a situation that this isn't going to work out and I have to freak out about this, it's just like, okay, it's okay. I'm just, this is just really amusing right now that this is happening. And keeping a lightheartedness about things, a playfulness. Um, what we see with a lot of women, especially as we age, you can tell the women that have the information and the women that don't have the information. That's the only difference is that the women that have the information grow more playful. Hmm. As we get older as women, we can get very serious without the information. Mm, yeah. And this is when life becomes a big effort because really where this programming comes from, if we go back, it's that... There can only be one king. There can only be one king. And so there can only be one Superman. There can only be one God. And so men are clamoring. This is a serious pursuit to be the only king. And it takes a lot of effort. And this is, there's a lot of problems that I have to overcome to become the one king. And that makes me exhausted as I'm competing against every other man to be the king. And so I'm going to punish the other people that aren't on my side. And... This just completely leaves them exhausted. And so as women, the feminine is really, this is amusement. It's, it's no effort. It's being in ease. It's being in collaboration instead of competition, permission instead of competition. It's being in rejuvenation instead of exhaustion. Yes. And so it's, these are all qualities of the radiant woman. Oh, Emily, this is so good. And I love that you said the words, like the words of a woman who's not nurturing her radiance and then the words, the descriptors of someone who is, because I think as you guys listen to them and you may even want to go back and write them down and you can, you know, set intentions around those words. You know, I want to be amused today not even I want to be, I am, like I live in a spirit of joy or whatever that feels like, that's another great way to start to tap in and feed the radiance that's inside of you so it can bust out and grow and like feed your soul the way that it's supposed to to do it. Oh my gosh. So, so good. Absolutely. And I um, actually have on my website for your audience, I have my top six ways to rev your radiance. Oh, great. Um, so you can access that by emilyperera.com forward slash her voice. And so um, you can, you can dig in a little bit more there. Great. And we'll put the link to that in the show notes and right in the podcast app that you're listening to. So Emily, why don't you, um, you shared your website. Why don't you also share other places where people can connect with you? Yes, absolutely. My Instagram is at Emily Begins, as you might be able to guess from being the beginner, constantly beginning. Um, and yes, my website, emilyprayer.com. Those are the two best ways to connect. Fantastic. And I actually been following you over on Instagram and I love your posts. They're really lovely. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah. With like really thoughtful captions and yeah, I've, it's been feeding my soul. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I always ask all of my guests one um, question to end up our discussion. And that is in your life right now, what is your inner voice urging you to do? Or what direction is your inner voice asking of you? So my inner voice is asking me to really, you know, be even more vulnerable. <laughs> Mm. Be even more vulnerable about the journey because as, you know, teachers and coaches, we get to a certain level and we are helping people. And at the same time, that doesn't mean we don't have challenges still. And, um, you know, if we're, if you're doing something, if you're on a path of growth, 
there will always be challenges. And thank Mm -hmm. goodness when we have, you know, I call it my spiritual toolbox. I have my spiritual toolbox that allows me to navigate with more ease and grace through these challenges, but that doesn't mean I don't have them. And so sometimes, um, you know, even I get in that kind of place where it gets scary to be super vulnerable. And now, you know, when you've got, you know, 18,000 people following you on Instagram, that ends up being a lot of people that you're being vulnerable with. And so Mm -hmm. I just keep hearing my inner voice just say, just keep going, keep being vulnerable, keep just showing, you know, it's just, I really do believe one of my reasons for being here is really eschewing this, um, this myth of perfection. And so, you know, I live Mm -hmm. in Costa Rica, I have a beautiful man and a beautiful little baby, and finally I've created the business of my dreams. And in spite of all that, I still have plenty of challenges. (laughs) And so um, my inner voice is asking me to keep, just keep, just keep being vulnerable and just keep saying the things that scare me and that I don't want to say, because I know that I, I want to create a community of sisterhood and I want... I want women by my side that are real and that we're, we're sharing the ups and downs of life together. Yeah. Oh, and you know, it makes such a difference. It's so refreshing to hear coaches and women and visionaries come onto this podcast and say, you know, like it happens to me too. I get in a funk or, you know, I, you know, I create something that I really didn't want. This happens. And so I just want to honor your courage to be vulnerable with us. And just thank you for that. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me on your amazing podcast and getting an opportunity to chat with your listeners. And and yeah, I'm really so grateful. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I hope that you got a lot out of this interview. And if it did resonate with you if you really felt like there were some great takeaways for you can you do something for me please please share this with your friends take a screenshot share it in instagram share it on facebook and when you do tag me at kelly j covert so i can see that you're sharing it and make sure to give you a personal thank you when you guys do this for me this is how more and more people get this message it's how they get the message that they are worthy (laughs) that they are radiant, that they have everything they need right inside of them. And really, who doesn't need to hear that message? So thank you for impacting others by sharing this podcast. I so, so appreciate it and you. Just a reminder, the mastermind is open for application. I'd love for you to consider applying. It's going to be a great way to kick off your new year. Yes, we're kicking off the new year starting in October because let's not wait. Let's not wait until January 1. Let's move now. Let's give birth to our ideas now. As always, remember you guys, you matter. Your gifts matter. You showing up in this world as you, as 100% you matters. It's so important because you are worthy. 